know, I still uh, don't want to, to get into really any detail on, on my thoughts on Alex. Um, I don't want to say anything about Alex that I haven't said to Alex and obviously I haven't spoken to Alex. So there will be a time I, I think where I can, you know, get into more detail on, uh, on Alex and, and his situation, my thoughts on it, but, uh, that time isn't now. So I'm, I'm hoping everybody will respect that. Um, you said previously that, and I know you don't want more questions on Cora, so sorry in advance, but, um, that he was not on your radar at all. Is that still a position that you stand by? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back to what I said before, where you guys know in brief my thoughts on Alex, but I don't want to elaborate, uh, because I don't want to be saying things about him that I haven't said to him. Is that to say that prior managerial experience and or prior relationships with members of the Red Sox organization may be of somewhat less import now than they were at that time? I think that's fair to say, but there's still there's still things that I think we would value. I, I think the a good way to look at this is really to value the positives of any, uh, all the positives of, of somebody's experience. And certainly prior managerial experience is, is a good thing to have had. Uh, there's other experiences that people can bring to the table that are also positives. Uh, you know, I would say the same thing for connections to the organization where I think that's generally a, a positive thing, but you have to factor that in amidst all the other positives that somebody might have. Just sort of clarify you what you were saying before about Alex, you went on the, I think it was mostly on the radio at different times during the season. And just to paraphrase what I believe you said, it was essentially, there was a reason that Alex isn't the manager and you know, that's still the case. Um, is that kind of what you're saying that, that you're standing by what you said at that time? Yeah. Uh, I just don't want to get into more detail on it uh, just because I think to do so would be, you know, again, I don't want to get in the business with someone like Alex who, uh, is very important to this organization. I don't want to get in the business of saying a lot of things about him that, that I haven't had a chance to say to him. So I don't want to get into it in any more detail than that, but, but yeah, I am standing by that. So are you, are you basically saying he's not a candidate? Well, like I said, I don't want to say, uh, anything about him that I have not been able to say to him. So I'm not going to answer questions like that. Given that you uh, kind of inherited Alex when you were hired and then that you mentioned, you know, the late kind of uh, process with Ron and it's sort of being a time crunch there. How important is just this process for you um, as someone that's obviously new to the organization to have someone that um, you feel like you can flesh this process out and have kind of your, your own guy in a sense um, to be able to work with obviously day in and day out like you like you do? Good question. I, I never thought it was productive for somebody in a chair like mine to think of things that way. Um, you know, and I, I have seen, and I, I certainly have tried to do that here. And in uh, actually the last organization I was in, winding the clock back 15 years, how uh, people who you didn't necessarily hire yourself are integral and can be huge parts of success. So I don't think it's productive to think of it that way. I do think, you know, obviously the relationship between uh, the front office and, and particularly someone in my job and the manager is obviously really important. Uh, so it's important to to think that that you will have you know, a really good relationship and a good bond there. Uh, but at the end of the day, our jobs are to do what's best for the organization. It should be about the organization and what's best for the Boston Red Sox and not about me.